Alright, hey guys, uh, welcome to Let's Play Kid Icarus. Uh, hopefully you were able to read what I put there. I think I gave you enough time to read that. The little message thing. But yeah, I already did record this before, but I really just, um... Whatever, I guess I'll explain more as we get into the episode. But anyway, let's start. Um, World 1-1. So yeah, um, I think I actually edited in the music pretty well here, but, um, no sound effects, like I said. But, um, anyway, so in this game we control Pit and Angel, um, and when you kill enemies, uh, two to jump, one to shoot, pretty simple, on a Wii remote, you, uh, get experience and hearts. Experience, you know, that's pretty obvious. But, um, hearts are this game's currency, and you're definitely, definitely gonna want to collect hearts. And just trust me on that, it's... The game will be extremely hard if you don't collect hearts. And, um... I, I actually collected a ton of hearts in this video, especially compared to the original one, so it's good that I redid this. Um, but yeah, those were blue snake dudes. They have a name, but I'm not sure. These are red flying dudes. Um... <laughs> it was kind of jumping to the music there. That's cool. Which is funny, because I was jumping to the music that was coming from my TV, not what I edited in. So I guess that just shows how awesome I am at adding in music, or how easy it is to add in, or how simple... NES music is. Yeah. I, I think it's probably the latter. But anyway, um, here we have a monster room. These guys are spec noses. Uh, but I like to call... Well, I don't really like to call them this, but I think they look like the Grouchos from Earthbound Zero. And well, I missed that heart because I didn't jump. That's stupid of me. But basically, um, they kind of fly around and you can shoot them and get big hearts. Oh, I should explain the different values of hearts. Small hearts, like the blue snakes dropped, are worth one half hearts, which the um, red flying dudes dropped are worth five, and the big hearts that these speck noses are dropping are worth ten. In these monster rooms, um, all you get is heart, you actually get no um, experience. So if you don't care about hearts, then I guess you can you don't have to go in there because you won't really be behind on experience but you want hearts so yeah. and here's a reaper these guys are pretty tough they take 10 hits to kill um but basically you don't want to let the reaper see you because when they do they freak out and send mini flying dudes called reapets after you and i think like you can only get one hit on them when they're all freaking out because like you can shoot them more than once but it looks like it only does one hit of damage i'm not sure but um there we go that is a cup of life i believe and it'll heal you um here we have a treasure room um you can get treasure first of all shoot these three pots these first three that i'm shooting right here and um, that will determine, um, basically in the pots there are hammers and hearts, and there's also a god of poverty. And when um, you get the god of poverty, um, you can take one thing and then you have to leave. But um, as you can see, the god of poverty wasn't there, but I got a little jug, which is a bottle of life. It'll heal you when you die. Basically, if you get break all the jars and not the god of poverty's jar, and then... Um, you break the jar in which the god of poverty is in, then you'll get a better item, better than a heart or a mallet. And you might be wondering, well, how did you get that on your first try so easily? Well, I told you how that, um, I, to break those first three jars, depending on, on how many mallets you get in those first three jars, will, um, show you where the god of poverty is. Now, if it's zero mallets, I believe it's the bottom left. I think if it's one, it's the top right. Two, um, yeah, here's the reaper freaking out and setting the reapets at you. 
Um, if it's two mallets, I believe it's one below the top right, and if it's three like I had, it's in the middle. I think that's right. And if that's wrong, I'll just add in an annotation, I guess, but I'm pretty sure it's bottom left for zero, top right for one, below to one below top right for um, two, and middle for six. I mean, <laughs> not middle for six, middle for three. And this reaper is stuck in the wall, which makes him an easy target. I might have been able to get up on the same level as him and shot him, but I, I, I don't know. I, actually, I think Pit might have been too high to do that, so I was just jumping and shooting him. But hooray, easy experience, but I don't think I was able to get the heart. Yeah, it's stuck in the wall. Oh, also, another thing about this game... Um, as you see, we're scrolling upwards. The screen doesn't scroll back down if you fall, so if you fall and there's nothing there for you to land on, you just die. Unless you have a certain item, but we'll get into that later. But anyway, um... Level up. Not level up. End of level. And, um... I was actually a little worried going into this level, because I was like, oh no, I don't have very many hearts. Well, I guess... I don't know, it's not as many as I had in the original video. I had 165, but um, I actually got a ton of hearts in this uh, in this level, so I turn out okay. Um, the reason I had a problem trying to do the third level in the... Um, before... Um, was because I didn't do, there are two monster rooms in this level, and I didn't do either of them because I kept dying from them. So I didn't do those, and I was having a lot of trouble trying to do 1-3, and I kept dying. So in this recording, I ended up doing it again because I wanted the um, hearts. And I think it'll turn out to be very helpful. I haven't recorded the third level yet, but I have a lot more hearts, so that should be good. And, um, yeah, oh, also, uh, as you can see here, there's some ice tiles. Don't crouch when you're on ice or you will fall through. That happened to me a few times. It was very annoying. Don't crouch on ice. And, um, I was waiting for more enemies to come here, and I was like, okay, well, they're not gonna come. So I went and got the, uh, cup of life. But then as soon as the screen scrolled up for me jumping, they came, which was annoying. But, yeah, um, since... Every one of those guys gives you 10 hearts, assuming you can get them all. You definitely want to do the, these rooms. And also, don't, like, shoot them in a place where you're not going to be able to get, um, or not going to be able to get the hearts, because it's just pointless then, since you don't gain any experience. And, um... Yeah, in this level, we will actually be getting a strength upgrade, which is very helpful. It'll make enemies with high HP like Reapers much easier to kill. And we have another door up there, which leads to something different. I will explain that in just a sec. And I think I already explained this, but the bottle of life, like the one I got in the treasure room, um, heals you when you have died. Here we have a black market, and there's no sound in here aside from the text scrolling, but black markets will basically sell you three things, well, at least for now, and it's a higher price than you can normally buy at the store. Like you saw the bottle of life, it's much less expensive at the store, so you're not going to want to buy it there unless you the store is like really far away and you desperately need one, I guess. But, um... Yeah, that's a black market. And the thing in the middle, the barrel, um, you can actually not get in the store, so you might want to buy that there. There's another way to get it, but um, if I don't know, you can get a barrel in a treasure room, but it might just be easier to buy it. But um, and the th third thing was a feather. And um, a feather will basically give you a second chance, because if you fall, the feather will let you pit fly back up. So, that's nice. And then, there's other things we can buy at the black market, I think, but I'll explain that later. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, um, this run of this game is actually pretty blind. I've never beaten more than the first two levels. I've tried playing the third level, 
But other than that, I really haven't played very much of this game, which I didn't think it would be that hard. I was so wrong. This game is much more difficult than it appears from this video. I mean, I do okay, but it's... This game is definitely extremely hard. But, um, yeah, another monster room. I had a lot of hearts, which is good. And remember, don't crouch on the ice, because for some reason, ice is not a solid in this game. So you can pass through it. Wow, there are a lot of reapers in this level. The reaper music in this game is so annoying. It's It's so annoying. It just loops so cool after like five seconds. It's so annoying. I hate the reaper music. So don't let reapers see you because the music that plays when they do is annoying. Um, but yeah, I think a form of torture should be having the, the reaper music loop for like six hours and just have someone sit there and listen to it you would go insane um but yeah once we get the uh, strength upgrade I told you about um, our strength will be two as opposed to the one it is starting off and um, then we can kill reapers in five hits instead of ten so that's very convenient at least Reapers drop 10 hearts. At least, it's, at least it's not like one. That would just be cruel. And um, in here, I bought a bottle of life. And I couldn't really have bought much more. I guess I could have bought a hammer, but that's kind of pointless. So, um, yeah. Hooray for bottles of life. I actually um, used one in this episode at some point. I actually didn't notice it when I was playing, but when I was editing in all the music, I saw it. Um, I guess the next hit, I think I'll probably use it. But now I, I have two, which is nice. But um, it probably would have been wise to buy a feather, but I was just like, well, I'm confident enough in my platforming skills uh, that I don't need one. But then when I got to those jumps on those thin pillars over there, I was like, Oh crap, I really wish I'd bought that feather, but I didn't die, so, as you can see, so I'm good. And then, dude, look at that, I wasn't even facing the right way when I was trying to shoot the red flying dudes, that was just embarrassing. I thought I was facing the right way, but then I shot and they hit me and I realized that I was facing the wrong way, and that red flying dude just dis disappeared. Also, um, if you're blind and haven't noticed, when something goes from one edge, edge of the screen and it goes off, it comes out on the other side. That's pretty obvious. I think it's kind of cool. I haven't really seen any other games that do that. And I mean, I guess it wouldn't really work in newer games that are in like 3D, but it's kind of cool for an old game like Metroid and... Mario aren't like that. I mean, I guess they wouldn't really work if they did, but since Kid Icarus usually scrolls up, at least in this first world it does, and Metroid and Super Mario Bros. scroll to the left and right. But, um, the whole game isn't level scrolling up. We'll actually get to some side scrolling in the next world. And then Pitt's looking up to the music, because he's cool like that. Didn't really seem to have much of them though, but anyway, in here, um, we have a strength upgrade room. And you can't get a strength upgrade every time. Um, how you get it is determined by a certain like number of skill points or something, and I think you have to have like 10,000 to get it. And, um... It, the only way I know this is because I saw it on a guide, and you'll get, like, you'll lose points for shooting arrows, and, um, uh, something else, maybe buying something at the black market, I don't know, but you also get points for killing enemies, and, um, 
other stuff. But anyway, I have to go. I'm a George Mask Mill, and I'll see you guys next time in part two of Let's Play Kid Icarus. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye.